discussion very interesting one it's now time that we get into what is up next with the brand love indeed has many significant implications on brand life cycle jiha we have also often heard that consumer is king indeed that being said how does building brand love further ensure a fruitful relationship between the brand and its consumer to discuss this in depth our panelists are here to elaborate the role of brand oh. in consumer brand relationship well first i would like to welcome our session chair head of marketing india spotify neha ahuja we welcome you and of course joining us our panelists please welcome ashish mishra executive vice president marketing aco general insurance harish narayanan cmo mintra Hitesh Malhotra, CMO Lenskart, Lucky Sani, Head of Brand, Vedantu, Prasanna Rai, Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Wipro Consumer Care and Lightning, and it's going to be a very interesting evening. So yes, grab onto your tea or coffee and let the conversation come our way. Over to you, Neha, and I can't wait for it to unfold now. Thanks, Nitin. Thanks, Nitin. So uh, brand love is actually one of the most important strategies that we've had as our you know businesses for many many years and i think it's become even more relevant in the current times uh, we also believe that once build this emotional connection called brand love serves as a foundation for a long term uh, customer to brand relationship and we, and we often see the impact of this for a very long time um like you i am also super happy to have this you know absolutely stellar panel today on board and i'm sure that they will bring in a very uh, diverse view on the topic so without much further delay let's get started um hitesh we can start with you uh, what we really want to understand is that in your category do you feel that you consciously invest behind brand love or you feel that it's all about <laughs> You know, consumer service, consistent communication, product market fit. What do you feel about it? So uh, until now, uh, you know, uh, it in the past, uh, you know, it had been a very utilitarian communication because you know, uh, just like a you know a pharmacy, we are also uh, dealing in a category which is widespread and is available across all different nook and corners in India, right? So every postcode will probably have two to three opticians around that. So uh, you know, earlier the communication, the focus was quite utilitarian, where uh you know we talked about more as a value purchase you know more about the quality or more about simply speaking the whole uh, proposition that a customer can take out of the product but over a period of time we discovered that uh the only way to go about this is to accentuate brand love because uh the larger your category staggered or you know i would say uh scattered across unstructured marketplaces or unstructured retail the higher is your energy that you need uh, to create brand love right if you're not available across anywhere right and if you're the only seller for a particular category then your efforts are not as much but today you have to fight with not one or two large eyewear companies or eyewear retailers online or offline you're fighting with about a plethora of closer to 220000 uh, opticians across india so i think yeah it, it becomes a very very important factor at that point of time and we have we have realized it pretty well we respect that and we understand it now and uh, we feel that the brand love in our case has to be category driven uh since we are the largest seller or the uh, monopolist in this category the onus is on us to ensure that there is enough love for the category itself right so everything from uh, getting attraction on the glasses how they define the way your face looks to you know uh, relieving the taboo which is there in the which was there in the earlier societies talking about glasses and switching over to contact lenses or lasik i think we should be the champions of that communication and you know kind of lead from front so yes i think now it is very important because we are competing with 220 or 230000 people now right right thanks thanks so much um ashish what do you feel another very fierce category right to be to be to be part of uh, what do you feel about you know uh, customer experience driving the you know the loyalty and hence the love so for us at aco you know we believe that uh, brand love is something that is derived it will be an eventual outcome of all our efforts so what we are really focusing on now is is a simple principle that you know if you consistently exceed customer expectations 
you know and we do it consistently that's the main point and and we do it over a period of time eventually what will return, it will re- result in in a great uh, brand love for the for, for the for the for the brand so it's not uh, it's not a uh, it's not a marketing strategy for us it's a, it's 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 something that we would like to have eventually and we would we would also like to uh, uh, aim for it but that's not something that is driving what is, what is driving is is making sure that we are we are changing the way people buy insurance they are having a great experience while the while they buy while they renew while they claim and you know their their customer ex- satisfaction scores are, are are at a high i mean amazon is a great example right i, I love amazon and it just solved everything for me, for, for for me and that's a that's a brand that i, I can honestly say is love you know it's what probably would not fall in the usual le- le- uh, range of brands that people con- confess their love for you know yeah. Uh, lucky what about you very new category very new brand in the country right what is what is your opinion and how has been your journey hi uh, very good evening to everyone uh, on the panel and uh, uh, to you neha so yeah it's it's uh, for us it's it's really about experiences right uh, because we really operate in a uh, a very online uh, uh, you know only right uh, we are uh, by dna online right so everything needs to be crafted constructed from an experience point of view and uh, you know truly speaking uh, you know very service uh, 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 orientation is extremely important for us so the way we look at brand love neha is actually it's not a stream of work to drive for us i think it's a lens for us i'm sorry if i'm taking the word lens from the, from the category but i think it's it's a lens for us right so everything we got to look from uh, from a marketing point of view has to be looked at from that lens point of view right so a quick examples right look for example for us advertising is a very small part of the entire play right yeah. a lot of our experience building happens online so we have a very big charter called branded service design which means that very carefully and you know very with love crafting delightful experiences from the onboarding to the time someone is unhappy to the time when someone's kind of referring you back for the next year so i think it's extremely important to see journeys and i think i can't emphasize more on the importance of consumer journeys here to be able to really understand the consumers in terms of different uh, need states and what are they looking for and then for us as a service category we really look at brand love from that lens and a lot of initiatives make a lot of uh, 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 sense for us i think like i said in thoughts actions and also in a lot of ways uh, communication but uh, take the context of covid now right uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know we know a lot of people are getting impacted and kids are getting impacted in a big way uh, because of you know obviously losing parents uh, sometimes one sometimes both uh, and what's happened is i think we were also thinking of what could one do for example which is meaningful right i think for me the the really the golden word is meaningful right so uh, we didn't really kind of straight away jumped on to you know you know working with let's say a few ngos to kind of craft something which kind of you know does a little bit of benefit to the children because this is at the heart of what we do we actually launched a new initiative it's called help india learn so where we've actually earned marked a certain amount of money but money is not the point i think we've taken the responsibility of really taking 12000 kids on board for their education throughout so i think for us this is brand love right i think it's it's a, a communication is a small part of it we live in we live and breathe in the service industry for us experiences matter most so really crafting a superb thought through meaningful consumer journeys for different kind of students and parents who come to us and also try and value add across the spectrum so it doesn't matter if someone's by the way you should know we are the largest online free education platform in india today so just because you know there's a value to education A lot of students, by the way, don't come to us for paid education. We are the largest YouTube free YouTube channel in in India today, which means that we continue to invest in it not because of business sense, because we believe that the value of education is really about giving that value to students, no matter if they can't afford you also, right? So I think for us, it's a kind of an interplay between a very uniquely crafted, thought through, meaningful service design, a very strong action on ground in terms of how you support. contextual or how you support your community your core audience in times of uh, you know uh, you know highs and lows and obviously last of it is really crafting you know communication that is purposeful and i am a very strong believer that i think it's time that marketers move away from mind share marketing to really purpose uh, and more cultural uh, nuances i think if you consistently build that i think you're home so i think that's how we look at brand love and it's a goal it's a lens it's not a stream of thought 
thank you thank you um harish moving to you how do you keep the keep the love alive i'm i'm sure that you often engage in you know sort of trends that allow you to maintain that relevance to stay top of mind so how do you keep the love alive first of all uh, hello to everyone who's listening and uh, nice to see friends uh, we meet in these kind of meetings so that's great uh see the way love is a very loaded word may if you ask me uh we have not been able to define it in real life or personal life as well so i don't see it uh, being defined very well in terms of brand and um I, I, the, the presentation before us right that talked about love marks and the way we build something that is loved and respected and so on for me brand love is an outcome is it's an outcome of doing the right thing for the customer again and again and again and that's what brand love means to me right so uh by by i'll give you some examples examples of being relevant examples of being helpful uh, what uh, lucky also was talking about um examples of being conversational letting the customers uh, speak the voice of the brand rather than me telling what the brand should say um we uh where one of the uh, first uh, e-commerce companies to start uh, communicating again when we got out of lockdown last year and the first thing it did was called lockdown stories where a girl and a guy are sitting at home and uh, they are buying essentials uh from mintra right uh, we are fashion we are a very inherently very personal very creative kind of a category and it was a story about how a girl and a, a, a guy uh, a couple living in a house are able to do stuff in their homes by uh, using mintra that was a start then we have been doing mintra fashion superstar for the last 2 3 years uh, giving voices to people who never had a voice before uh, folks from different parts of the community in terms of uh, you know diverse uh, population uh, we started uh, um, bringing uh participants across the nation uh, across uh, types of uh, fashion sensibilities and everybody loved it because we were representing everyone again we were being helpful to the end customer uh third one i would give an, as an example is we started master classes right so again um india's top stylists bollywood celebrity stylists coming and teaching you how to put on a lehenga or uh, you know dress for uh, office occasion these are things as a as a just a e-commerce platform or a transactional part, platform we don't need to do but we do it because this is being helpful this is being going above and beyond and this is what brand love uh, will ultimately be driven by and to to the earlier points made right brand love is not something that is driven only by marketing i think a brand is driven by every single touch point in in my first company first job ever we used to call it moments of truth right um, Uh, in every moment of truth whether it is somebody buying uh, a package uh, a t-shirt from mintra the first time they try it on and they feel wow i just paid 400 rupees for this and this is so amazing right i can't believe it or the first call they make to us to return something or the first experience they have after they call the contact center or the first experience they have when they become a mintra insider i think each stage each brand stage and each moment of truth builds on the reputation that the brand builds and the the space it occupies occupies in your mind and that for me at the end of the day is brand love and it is built over a long period of time uh, just before us we were hearing uh, nestle talk about it maggie is a you know multi decade old brand and most of us in this call are less than a decade old or maybe you know decade and a half old so it's a very different mindset for us for us i think it is more about doing what is right for the customer and being helpful over and over again that when they think about buying fashion nothing else comes to mind they are like yeah of course i have to buy from mintra why would i even think of anything else right and that i think for me is a combination of all those moments of truth and how we uh, delight the customer at each touch point marketing and communication being one of those touch points so that's how i would uh, think about brand love yeah absolutely couldn't agree more harish uh, on that note prasanna you are a, in a very different sort of uh, you know managing a very different category and a very different life stage to you know uh, to what harish mentioned right all of us here are managing categories and brands that are actually less than a decade old right so and you work on a uh, you know a very different life stage of a category do you feel any differently about uh, you know how you you have built 
the brand love uh, in your category yeah thanks thanks neha and um, hi to everybody listening and to my co panelists uh, so it's 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 interesting see um, the other panelists in this uh, um, in here are all people from the service industry where there is a touch and feel and you know people actually provide you feedback to your face in in fmcg there are two three differences one is there is a large base of consumers second is you're not touching them or meeting them on face to face it is a it is an interaction which happens through your communication and stuff and you're also handling multiple brands so i have to take on from what the earlier panelists mentioned i see it as an outcome which is exactly true and each brand is at a different stage of this journey towards brand love right so if i take in my portfolio i have santur which is a well established brand over 25 years there the concept of brand love is absolutely true it's as good as you know what we were uh, hearing about maggi right there are people in some parts of the country where they swear by the brand right and they think that it does everything that a soap has to do at the same time if you take a new brand it's at a completely different space and different time in its journey so i equate this it's very similar to quoting a girl and moving on to a relationship and going on to a marriage so it is different stages in a, a relationship that you go through it's a similar thing with brand building you start off so if you are a new brand you can't now suddenly start talking about brand love you'll have to go through the steps first you need to go and introduce yourself you go you need to tell the consumer that you are so and so then move on to the next stage provide them a functional promise then move on at the same time provide an emotional promise then over a period of time if you are able to build that kind of a emotional connect and people have started behaving from their side consumers start interacting with you start buying buying you then at that stage can i pro provide an emotional payoff which takes a takes the relationship to the next level then build in a purpose that it takes it to a completely another level so each brand in my opinion it's a journey where the outcome is what we can hope for is a brand love but it is a very longish journey and each brand needs to approach it from their reality in the business and stage of evolution of the brand and treat it accordingly so each step in this journey will have a different requirement that's how i see it so a new brand needs to focus on the basic awareness whereas the brand which is at a brand love stage where people are regularly buying it there is a huge level of loyalty there you have a lot of other activities of brand engagement brand activation purpose other things that you can get into so that's how i would define and define a journey which could be different for different brands agree 80% and i think also keeping with the sentiment of how you uh, sort of compare you know human relationships and the journey of that with brand love i think let's uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about the correlation between brand love and brand loyalty uh, what is the correlation is there any correlation i think let's discuss that and uh, harish i will come back to you um uh, your category particularly has a uh, really low entry and exit barriers right unfortunately uh how do you ensure loyalty and you know uh, do you feel that loyalty does play a role or is there any correlation between brand love and brand loyalty specifically for uh you know categories like yours which has very low entry and exit barriers so i definitely think there is a strong correlation between uh, customers who love our brand and who are extremely loyal to us so if you talk to a customer who is and and there are fortunately for us there is actually a way to uh, describe it in more uh, functional terms right we have a insider program which is a loyalty program and within the insider program we have different tiers of uh, uh, loyal users uh, we have mintra uh, insider and select and elite and icon customers and if you look at our uh, top Two three tiers of customers, they would not shop anywhere else. For them, shopping for clothes anywhere else is like walking into a mall, and then uh, shopping for clothes from a general store versus walking into a Levi show or a, or a, a mango show. So the the specificity of the joy of shopping, uh, they would swear by Mintra, and that's something that keeps us uh, you know differentiated. Even in, like you said, the the um, exit and entry barriers are very low. 
but we do occupy that special place in their mind when it comes to uh, fashion and it reflects in their share of wallet that they spend with us so yes there is a definite correlation but again as i said we we will aim to give the best delight to the customer the loyalty is more uh, planned and more uh, uh, you know well executed i would say the love happens to be an outcome so we make sure that the best customers are treated even disproportionately they are rewarded disproportionately and they stay with us and hence brand love happens i don't think it is the other way around again but uh, definitely strong correlation between uh, somebody who is a loyal customer and somebody who is who has a strong brand love for us yeah yeah thanks arish uh, hitesh coming to you um do you think you've enjoyed some suitable conditions in the in the re, in the recent times right uh, because of the whole external environment and if so do you think that you know you've been able to build a loyalty and an emotional connect among an extended tg because of you know uh, the external conditions and uh, you know i would say some favorable suitable conditions for you yeah yeah i i would say we were able to exploit a couple of conditions definitely one is lockdown work from home and the time that you spend on screen right so uh, now the anti glare or we call it blue um, spectacle it becomes like an essential that everybody needs to wear to protect your eyes from the screen so yes it helps our situation to acquire new customers especially in the kids segment because you know this is one category which is not directly uh, you know influenced by the kids but the parents as well so when you acquire a kid you actually acquire two more parents along with the kid right so that's the beauty of the business because uh, generally uh, the the spectacle or the eyewear business is a very referral led business you know it is often said that if you are able to invoke one tribe in one family you'll automatically win about 9 to 11 customers in the vicinity of that family either the family itself or the vicinity right so referral plays a very strong part in that and that's the reason most of our loyalty programs are referral driven right which we call as gold where people can come and do trials uh they can distribute the code amongst the family and then they can get a free pair of glasses so yes we were able to utilize a couple of spots one is that people sitting at home they need glasses uh, you know on screen so that's something worked in our favor also uh, you know in the previous edition of IPL we were able to advertise and pass it messaging like really really strongly and we were able to juxtapose it by different idioms that we had and yes it it helped us gain a lot of new customers which we were not looking at as primary customers a few years back or maybe uh, you know uh, not from the straight uh, you know uh, perspective of thinking we thought that okay uh, people with prescription eyewear or you know with number glasses have to be the primary customers now that focus is now shifting right it is moving more into the zero bar customers that uh, you know uh, could be a very very big potential later on also uh, there is another thing to be noticed here is that uh, automatically if parents i have prescription eyewear if they have glasses so irrespective whether the kid has got prescription or not they still want to go for that category they want to play it a little safer so two new acquisition outs in the customer said one is definitely uh, the younger people the kids who are sitting at home working on zoom uh, you know working on classes digital classes and the other audience is the progressive customers the older audience sets living in joint family no, echoes um sorry current year the is it something I think some yeah, so, okay. So, so the other set is the progressive customers. So typically, the grandparents, all the uh, people around the age group of fifty, fifty-five, living in a joint setup. Uh, we usually don't see the order coming directly from their phone numbers. It usually comes from the existing customers' phone numbers who've been purchasing regular eyeglasses. But yes, uh, as a category, uh, it's it's an inclusion. So to uh, curtail that or to arrest that, we started creating profiles on the website on Lenskart. That means you know it will actually ask who you are buying it for. just like how you see it on netflix that who are you watching it for so uh, typically when you put the profile we have stored the customers frame size at the frame that fits his face because we got a 3d try on and on top of that we also save the par so the par and the frame size works like magic in personalization because you know we don't have any other levels of personalization like a mensa does right the closest we can get to is if you know your breadth size your temple size and the kind of glasses you purchased in the past so i think yes uh, progressive and kids definitely has helped us acquire new customers in this situation Interesting. Do you also see more uh, stickiness or loyalty around this time? Um. So there is there is a beauty of it is that if a customer has made more than one purchase, then loyalty is not a problem for us, mm-hmm. right? Our main game is to go to the second purchase, mm-hmm. uh, or the second or the third uh, consecutive purchases. After that, loyalty is not an issue, right? Then we kind of become like a family business for the customer. right because they feel pride in sharing what they purchase and they get more customers from the same family setup or the friends setup itself 
the most difficult task is to retain customer after the first purchase right as i said the distractions are big right there is it's a scattered industry it's distributed over every region so people have pretty good examples or reasons reasons to you know take our product and compare it to a nearest optician and then you know get misinformed and buy something else perceiving it to be as good as our product but the moment we clear the hurdle of second we are usually good to go and that's the reason on most of our ranges we do buy one get one right so we are creating that need because luckily we have the gift of margin uh, we are backward integrated and uh, you know we control the entire supply chain so we run it on buy one get one because we said it even if the pretext is that the customer makes two purchases even the second one is free a zero rupees in the first instance itself the chances that the customer will stick longer is very high okay great um lucky uh hey they spoke about the power of word of mouth and referrals i'm sure that you know in your category you know this plays a very important role in you know sort of one of course acquisition and then uh you know continuing with the brand love and loyalty so what do you have to say about you know building loyalty and and specifically you know coming by the, the route of uh, the referrals yeah i think you put it very right neha for us i think uh, uh you know education is one category where time is far bigger than money right uh the amount of time you spend with a brand and the more you are invested into a brand it's like saying you 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 don't you don't move your you know you know you don't shift your barber and your teacher and your doctor very very easily right so and i think it's very true because some some of these categories and some of these professions are such where you really get into uh, when you when, when all tick boxes check right when you really know that you're in the right place you're getting treated well you are very relevant uh, you know someone's taking care of you so i think for us uh it is actually a very very big uh, agenda that we need to be able to kind of really focus on uh, you know retention and repeat in a very big way right and for that like i i came back to my previous point that it's very important to keep focusing on how the journey is unfolding it's not just about acquiring new customers right for us it's really about retaining them and really giving them value that goes beyond because for us the acquisition cost dramatically reduces once you look at second year third year Uh, i think and and the cost of acquisition obviously is very very high for a category like us uh, but at the same time if you do it well uh, you know we are in very very aptly placed for us to not really kind of really bother about you know again reacquisitions and uh, next year onwards right at the same time it's very important to know that uh, you know when the disconnect is high you won't get that person back see i i i believe that you know people would still some point of the other you know for 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 my friend harish here i think one mistake here and there probably you know you you'll you'll probably would back sometime later with some other program but i think for us opportunity cost is quite high uh, and i think if there's a bad experience or if you don't see the first year going well or the first three months going well i think you kind of lost the person for good right because you don't go to the guy who cut your hair bad for the first time right you just don't go to him again right so so i think for us the correction lucky so for us first if we miss the first one we are done moment <laughs> 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 <I'm laughs> of is important for all of us for sure like yeah. through the through the yeah. categories yeah yeah and i think i think it's also because arish because we kind of live in the age of abundance now right i think we are spoiled for choices between brands and between the same guys giving two options and many brands fighting for the same mind space and love so called love right so i think you don't get that too many options and for us like obviously stakes are quite high uh, it's a very high involvement category so we really truly believe that uh for the first one month we call it seven day 15 day and then obviously the first quarter kind of a uh, play and we really need to ensure that the nps for example is kind of constantly maintained we want to be very sure that the relationship matrix is evolving and strengthening for our own customers paid customers as we go forward in the journey and word of mouth referrals is a very very big deal for us in fact it comes second after Uh, etl uh, in terms of both awareness creation and also getting us new customers so i think can't emphasize more on how 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 important it is but i think like uh, prasanna uh, put it here it's a very young brand uh, and we've just started on the journey it's it's too too early to call out people have started falling in love with uh, the model or the brand but i think what we can hope for is that we are able to deliver value in every uh, experience and i think with that in place we hope that you know we we really see you know our business kicking in from early learning we have three verticals early learning which starts from first standard and we have an option of students getting trained for iit j right so it's a full spectrum uh, 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 business right so i think hopefully someday 
there will come a student where you know someone's going to be enrolled in a coding class with vedantu and going to go on to clear iit je from vedantu so yeah fingers crossed and <laughs> i think that's the aim to kind of achieve you should start flashing i don't know one of the next steve jobs right so i don't know in today's era these kind of things work no i think the fomo fomo world of education <laughs> is kind of taken over but i think we want to stick to sincerity i think there is a little bit of awe, there's a little bit of sanctity to education nitesh i think somewhere you got to maintain that and i think some things are short lived than others if you are true to your dna if you if you kind of stick to your roots i think you know people will come back yeah Cool. Okay, Ashish, coming to you. I think both Lucky and Hitesh did mention that you know that second purchase is the is the sweet spot somehow, right? Um, in your category, I'm not sure how many times you are actually even able to take your consumer to you know sort of experience the product, right? Experience the the service uh, even once. You know, I'm sure that you know uh, the lesser the better for you guys, but. Uh, feel about it i mean what do you feel about the insurance category how do you build loyalty where you know 80% of your users don't even get to experience really the you know the product to the end so i think what's very interesting i've been listening to everyone is like i really find five or six different marketers agreeing to one standard definition <laughs> it has been really good to see everyone here believes that brand love is an outcome And, you know, and it is, it is, you know, it is, and as Harish also said, you know, sometimes brand love can actually come from the designers, or who design the product design, or who design how the way the product flows, uh, you know. So that 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 is not a marketing driven function. I also believe one of the thing is that you know, if love is a loaded word, and you know, Lucky said the so-called brand love, uh, you know, uh, if love is a loaded word, I think Harish uh, loyalty is also pretty loaded. You know, I believe that we we expect customers to say. If I am loyal to this brand, I will never ever buy any other brand. Now that's then that really doesn't happen. Like for example, if you sl- slap on uh, fresh sport and mint on a deodorant, I'll buy it. <laughs> those three things are just those three things. Are, three things are enough, you know. So for us, I think what I what I what I'm trying to uh, bring to the point is customer satisfaction at every stage, whether it is at a purchase stage, whether you actually get to see the brand in action. and for us brand in action will be the time when our customer actually claims so customer satisfaction at every stage is what we aim for you know if you have a great fantastic experience the first time you actually land on the app or on the website because you know what, what has happened is there is a there is a big uh, misunderstanding that insurance category is complicated and you know you you need help and when customers actually go on and try for the first time they enter uh, uh, the card details and and as they go through the journey that delight is what we focus on the fact that you know i can i can provide great customer satisfaction during the buying phase during the discovery phase and then when you and you know again a great bank or a great insurance company is you know the one that stays in the background you really don't feel the need uh, or you know uh, of of uh, of having to utilize that you know i mean if i have to turn up to my bank for something i would really be angry you know i that that's that's what that's what it is so and you're right you know so sometimes we miss out on the fact that you know 80% of our customers don't claim so how do i actually show you what great uh, um, um, brand promise i can deliver when you actually claim but that's the that's the part. so i instead of focusing on that just only on the 20% we also focus on the 80 saying hey if you great you had a great year you didn't have any issues so enjoy this great buying process the easiest renewal process and in case just in case you had a bad luck and you had a claim let me give you something that will just uh, that will just delight you so we have something called you know one of the uh, in the first in the industries you know three day three day claim settlement or or on on account settlement there are customers who have filed a claim in the morning and have got money in their account by evening you know one of the one of the other things that we did recently on health insurance was that for the first time ever we credited money into a patient's account who was getting admitted into the hospital even before they claimed because the hospital refused to do cashless claims it has never been done in the industry you know we we are breaking that so you, you deposited money into the customer's account even before they claim and because we knew the customer was serious he was in the hospital so those are things you know and it, it shows uh, three out of four customers uh, come back to our that's yeah. that's cra- that's crazy and that's a, that's a good, i would take that percentage any any day you know and 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 we got nps scores uh, in the high 80s you know uh, when it comes to people who have claimed from our uh, so this is I, I think our obsession with customer satisfaction, trying to make it easy, simpler, it will eventually lead into the outcome of brand love. 
But that's that. That's the as I said. That's all, we all agree on the fact that it's a derived metric. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, a quick point to uh, to 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 what uh, uh, Ashish was saying is that I think there are far more light users to a brand than heavy users, right? Eventually, yeah. the number of users to a to a brand which are light users are far higher, right? So I think yeah. there's obviously a little more emphasis today on loyalty, but I think let's remember that, like uh, Ashish said, to be really crafting mass programs to the light users that delight them. is as important as to be able to craft something very very uh, you know intense for the high intensity or high frequency user so i think it's it's an important point that we should not miss out on the fact that all of our focus of love is only going on creating those 20% guys who come to us because we all know you know loyalty is an expensive metric to maintain and build absolutely. right absolutely <laughs> absolutely you know such a small 10% of your customers are probably loyal as lo- and when we say loyal as in the ones who i will never go to another brand <laughs> you know that kind of loyalty we are talking about Okay, so quickly moving on, guys. Uh, Prasanna, you manage, uh, you know, an iconic brand, Santur. Does satisfaction or loyalty look any different for you? I mean, I honestly, yeah. I have worked on FNCG for you know many many years. In fact, I've grown up in the FNCG environment, and I know that how two brands can coexist in the same bathroom. So, you know, how do you ensure some loyalty, and you know, uh, what does satisfaction look like for a brand like Santur? Yeah, it's interesting, Neha. Uh, you know, with the with the diverse panel here, uh, I was just thinking about it. If you take Vedanto and uh, Hacko, where the cost of each purchase is higher compared to a Lenskart and a uh, Mintra, and when you come to me, I will be the cheapest. So the kind of repeat purchase that everybody has in its in their mind is at a different level to define loyalty. For a Vedanto or a, or a, or a, a insurance, it could be two, three purchases would be considered as great loyalty. But if you come to FMCG, if a person continuously buys fifty times, even then I would doubt to call them as a loyal consumer. That's that's the first thing. So the question of how many repeat purchases is going to define and how are you going to define loyalty is going to be different. But having said that, the first purchase for anybody to any of this industry. the first purchase becomes extremely important you have to get the person for the first purchase which will have different tactics of its own so that's the most important but after that get them repeat over a period of time will be a different point of time and it will depend upon how it, so in our case in fmcg for example um we have data which i can track saying what is the kind of loyalty and what is the kind of breakup of a uh, customer that i'm getting up, getting So, for example, in uh, certain markets of ours, like in Andhra for Santur, which is it's the largest brand there, uh, almost fifty percent of the consumers there in that market who who uh, buy Santur, almost eighty percent of their annual requirement of soap is satisfied by Santur. So that's the kind of loyalty that we're talking about. So there are certain markets for certain brands. where loyalty is a huge base of consumers unlike what we were talking earlier lucky was talking about it's a small base but there are different brands at different stages but if i go to another market where the loyalty is lesser i i it will be lesser so i need to adapt my approach to each of these markets differently so loyalty is a great measure to define brand love having said that in fmcg there is also a possibility because over a period of time what happens in fmcg is also inertia buying every time you go to the market by habit you are buying so it's also important to track some of the image metrics which you want to position your brand or brand on so apart from loyalty that parameter also becomes important what is he or she as a consumer said thinking about the brand is there key imagery that we are tracking is that going lower in spite of loyalty being high is an extremely important thing because if the imagery drops you can lose your loyal customers at any point of time they might not show it today they might continue to buy because of inertia but if their mind measures about your brand and the imagery goes down they can drop you at any time so i would say loyalty in addition to the way the brand images uh, and how people see your brand or position your brand in their mind is also something very important to ensure that you have brand love sure sure thanks thanks for sana very helpful and uh, i love to discuss you know the fmcg in my mind it's it's my it's my dna so i i love it um guys moving on to the next 
uh, part of the discussion, let's talk a little bit about measurement. Um, uh, you know, we are most often faced by very stiff questions by our CFOs and our leadership teams, right? That, you know, uh, how will this impact? How will this initiative ultimately have an impact on the PNL? I'm sure we've all faced those questions. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how we measure or do we measure it at all? Um, lucky to start with you. Uh, there is a lot of buzz in your category, right? Um, uh, you know, with, with I mean, I, I think it's a very fierce category right now. Uh, especially during the lockdown, how do you firstly, how do you differentiate between buzz and love, right? And then moving on to the second part is that how do how do you think that you measure the impact of brand love? Yeah, so I think a couple of ways, uh, Neha. Uh, so first of all, I think uh, I don't think there are easy answers to this. Uh, we have all gone into rooms where. Uh, questions on brand love and what is even brand spends driving forget about brand love i'm i'm asking a bigger question on you know it's difficult to today attribute to to a t in terms of what exactly is brand spends doing but having said that there are there are a couple of ways to look at it right and 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 a and couple of lead metric couple of lag metric kind of a philosophy uh, so obviously if you are a brand trying to drive brand love or at least affinity and uh, you know uh, passion towards your brand if i break it up into a slightly more you know comprehensible pieces uh, so i think what we do is what what we are trying to kind of craft now and i think i picked it up from nike and nike used to do it many years back and they still do it uh, is that in many parlances we have all known of brand equity studies but i think those are very strategically used for either you know uh, to prove a point in larger boardroom meetings or or more on m a opportunities kind of a places right but having said that what i am personally trying to drive at vedantu is that we are trying to craft something like a mini equity uh, kind of a conversation happening every uh, you know once in two months so what we do is actually if you really break up brand love right you know it's actually comes from an interpersonal theory of love right so essentially what are the components of it right it's affinity Right, which is connectedness and bondedness, which in many ways, you know, Brandy and Milward Brown fundamentals have proven. It's intimacy, right, which is how passionate you are about the whole thing, and uh, and trust. Naturally, kind of kind of breaking down brand love into pieces, right. So what we doing, we are trying to craft something called, let's say, a brand uh, a passion score or a brand relationship equity score, which is essentially a combination matrix, which is is a brand that I is made for me. It's a statement that we could craft out of the brand uh, health track. Uh, is a brand that I uh, trust, and is a brand that I passionately or purposely talk to others for or with. So I think a, a, a kind of a composite score uh, gives us a strength of the relationship of the brand with the core users. And I'm emphasizing here core users because you can't be everything to everyone, and you got to be very specific that where are you driving this equity from, correct? And if you're, and every brand has these three set of, uh, you know, circles, right? The the insiders, rightly said, Harish is called the Mintra insiders, right? Like there's an insiders, there is the followers, and then there is the feeders, right? So with the insiders and the followers, we quickly test, uh, you know, these three composite scores of is a brand I trust, is a brand that I recommend or or passionately fondly talk about, and is a brand that I is made for me. It's extremely relevant for me. I think these three metric combined gives us a view of what the strength is. And if we see competitively going up and down, we know the relationship is moving because of certain interventions and because of a of category play. Like you said, it's a very hectic category. Uh, and the other thing which we measure, and I think it's an important thing to do, is uh, social equity. I think the share of voice, the po the positive share of sentiment, uh, which is by the way a weekly metric and not a a monthly by monthly kind of a thing, because I think everyday conversations are happening on choosing a brand online before anything else is happening today. So I think if you are creating, giving and measuring your social equity through a combination metric of share of voice, uh, positivity or the, the passion share of voice within the social sentiment. And are you seeing some leading and lagging measure in terms of your brands getting called out for a particular type of attributes versus others and versus competition? So I think in between these combinations, we are able to kind of assign some weightages and create, hey, this is the strength of a brand. And for users who are core, who are insiders, this is the strength of the brand versus, let's say, outside circle of followers or uh, feeders. But I think I still believe the correlation of all of this 
to hardcore business metric of share of uh, a wallet or uh, you know share of revenue or share of market is still a modeling exercise uh, the more data you sit on the more the heritage of your brand the more you are able to prove this in boardrooms and cfos i think everywhere else what the task for me for example is to forward looking kind of build these models and help people track those to those models that here looks like there is a correlation getting established the more we do this the more this is happening and the forward looking thing is working out better that we don't have too much heritage in backward looking data right now so i think that's how we look at the play of uh, measuring brand love but i am telling you there is no easy answer to this <laughs> it's 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 easier said than done and hopefully people buy into our arguments and people kind of you know take a shot at this and you know say okay fine let's look at some of the leading metrics and let's look at some forecasting on these things versus trying to prove a point here and now and if we shut down by the way initiatives like this in a quarter uh, because of these things not happening and i think then it's like the worst situation ever yeah sorry harish um mintra is a very data rich organization right and uh, you know lucky mentioned that the more data you have the better measurement you can do of you know any kind of brand love or loyalty so do you have any magic tools and magic wands that you sort of use to uh, use to measure uh, brand out don't we all wish <laughs> yeah. um actually uh, lucky covered uh, quite a few things so um, i do agree with him on so one um, imagery metrics on leadership in fashion that matters a lot so if somebody thinks of uh expertise in fashion knowledge in fashion choice selection price uh, offers we measure a lot of these things uh, in terms of mind metrics i think this combines to an equity score and we choose the ones that matter to us the most in a particular given segment so in a segment if you want to be known as fashion forward and the the trend leader then we track that if somewhere else selection is what matters then we track that so we have by segment we understand the imagery metrics uh, second we do definitely is social so um share of voice uh, positive share of voice and social so that's also another metric i think the one that he didn't cover that i would add is given it's a very very competitive category and like you said the the cost of uh, exiting and entering the category is so low uh tom and spont very basic you know awareness metrics also matters uh when somebody thinks of online fashion are they thinking of me first uh, and as long as that scores keep going it means that at the moment of impulse purchase they think of me before anyone else so while it's a very basic type of metric uh, tom and total spend uh, that also uh, helps us identify the impact that are uh, above the line and uh, brand conversations are having uh, while a lot of uh, below uh, or rather performance led kind of pushes reflect in uh, other things right so it may be consideration maybe purchase intent and so on so imagery metrics social and very very top level mind metrics these are the three uh, combination of these three is what i look at thank you thanks sadish it is coming to you um, i think some of the points the tools the modeling has been covered uh, i think for your category like you mentioned sometimes the the buyer is not the user himself yeah. so in that case how do you kind of measure the brand love so um, honestly naya yeah, i think brand love is quite perceptive and at the same time measurable to an extent every good cmo worth his salt would know what is the brand love of his organization that is his choice whether he cho- chooses to tell his ceo or not or whether he don't makes it public or not but he knows it right every cmo would know at the back of his hand what is the level of brand love his company is operating at and i think uh, there are two three main factors that in a place like ours where the primary customer may not uh, be the user at the same time uh we still depend on a lot of traditional uh, you know metrics for example for us the comment space in social media is very important comment and the saves and the shares right we feel that you know instagram today is a world of wonders for marketers i take that stats very personally uh, right from a previous assignment to current one because i go very deep into it in terms of every story every post every reel what is the kind of shares what is the kind of saves that are happening on that because it gives me a little bit of an idea that uh, what direction um the content is heading right and content it's a very very critical part in brand love that is one second is the absolute hard metrics could be uh, things like for example your repeat cac right so your cost of purchase if it's 100 rupees 
in in an ideal situation where you know your repeat customers are an indicator of brand love which are not come in more than 10 or 11 rupees right so the one tenth of cac that's a scenario that most of the people would want to maintain at and you know i i truly believe that you know marketing follows the rule of state right so as we say that a perfect state is recognized by how it takes care of its weakest a perfect mar- marketing is recognized by how it uh, enchants the person who's typically not your audience as well right that's a very one strong analogy which i find with marketing and a state secondly you have developing state developed state in marketing also you're developing marketing teams and develop marketing teams right so it's 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 always there's a team which is following a process and getting there and but a whole lot of confusion and chaos is existing and the other teams sit comfortably where they exactly know what they need to look at and what are the levers they need to press so uh, one is as a soft metrics i would say instagram i take very seriously and the hard metrics is a repeat cat somewhere in the middle of all this uh, you know we do have a panel i all wherever i work i always believe in having a consumer panel my consumer panel is a very strong indicator of uh, whatever things we are doing as marketers is correct or not right the panel is not responsible to inform us about um, the product quality or you know their customer service experience to some extent but largely we are keeping a panel to see the efficacy of what are they perceiving about the brand with every piece of communication that kind of goes out as a marketer we can just control communication and media right we don't have enough controls over the product or the supply we can always have meetings in the boardrooms and bring these points out but we are not direct controllers of it right we anticipate we pray for the best but the real control is now is basically communication and media so i think having a panel the soft metrics on social media and the hard metrics on the repeat cac versus new cac if these three things are well maintained you will be a developed marketing team right for sure you will be like a developed nation or developed marketing team and basically your job becomes easier and you're getting paid for like 4 hours of duty every day then yeah thanks thanks sesh uh thank you guys i think super super enriching conversation i will be careful of the fact that we are on a friday evening and we are approaching the you know the closing time uh so i think what we can do is that very quickly let's go around the table and maybe have just one brief closing remark from all of you uh you know as as what is the takeaway that you want the young marketers to you know sort of believe in when it comes to brand love Hitesh, we can start with you since you're on the screen right now. Um, be very honest with where your brand stands today, right? It, there is no shame if your brand is not at the top pedestal, and you know there's still a journey to cover. Be at least honest with yourself and the stakeholders in the company, right? There is no point sugar polishing when you really know that you know when you're uh, getting a million views boosted and you get one comment that Hey, Neha, how are you doing? Right? So you you clearly see the signal where it stands. Just be very honest with it because that's the first step. if that is not there then you will pretty end up in a very messy state and you know i see a lot of youngsters you know who want to operate uh, a fmcg kind of scenario in a startup it's not possible right today what you see with the britannia or wipro or uh, you know taj mahal or even any liver company is the hard work of late 60 70 years put together of a lot of different individuals yeah. across the world now we are trying to fast track all of it with company like lenskart mintra nike you know so many others aco so when you're fast tracking it right not necessarily that you know the same principles will apply everything has to be a little bit on a fast mode and honesty and i think that is like really really important because this is something which is missing right people don't stand up and say that look i know we are in deep shit right now we got to crawl out of it right everybody kind of starts believing that we are in a sweet space and then there is no scope for improvement from that point so i think that is the most important thing i believe thanks sir thanks for being brutally honest there loved it uh, lucky anything from you no i i just had to summarize with uh, when i was looking at that topic of discussion also the song that came to my mind was beatles all the money can't buy me love right so uh, i think uh, to all the marketers budding non budding you know whatever young old i think you need to have your own formulas i don't think there's a straight cut metric to all of this uh, just pick the foundation simple uh, keep track of you know and i think there are enough foundational uh, frameworks available out there in terms of you know how to measure all of these things how to build it but i think you just need to keep a pulse on the consumer i think if you keep the panel like itesh was saying very baby very very close to your consumer i think the more closer you are the more frequently you talk to them uh, the more you understand and trust me you know like understanding human beings and therefore relationships are complicated uh, it's not easy to get them it's not easy to maintain them it's not easy to even kind of build it i think you got to be keep reinventing inventing uh, and i think stay true to the fundamentals of who the brand is i think knowing thyself is very very important before you go out and you know start uh, you know wooing your consumers with all the love so i think yeah to the straight answer keep your horizon slightly broader 
go beyond advertising start to look at smaller wins i think someone said it right in loves even the small things matter in fact small things matter than the bigger gestures right so keep at it uh, find your small gestures big gestures and know thyself and know your customers well that's it thank you lucky for the life lessons much more than brand love lessons harish anything from you um i agree with what hitesh and lucky uh, said and, and i'll take a slightly different route so that i add to the conversation right in categories where you have a very vocal customer let your customer build your brand with you we tend to like oh, oh my brand i will say i will control i will say exactly what is supposed to be said there's a 200 page brand guideline book that uh, you should not cross and all that will happen right uh, that that age is past uh, the best brands are built when the customer speaks on your behalf um, and they are able to fight for you they are able to Uh, speak your language they go out and make things uh, possible which uh, you never thought was possible so i think letting go of a bit of control and letting them build a brand with you and your spotify is is a prime example of that i would say yes so that would be my uh, tip for especially new age companies uh, let let the customer build a brand with you i completely agree harish and i think this is something that honestly i have learned after coming to spotify we i haven't done it in you know FMCG brands, even brands like Vodafone, which are very iconic brands, and you know, a young brand like Spotify, in just a matter of, you know, a year, year and a half, two years, we actually leveraged, you know, the consumer love to build the brand further. So, completely agree with you on that one. Um, Ashish, anything from you? I I think I, you're on mute. Can't hear you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was so I would just say that you know every consumer has an expectation with any category. I have an expectation that when I go to a particular show, how I'll, or a particular uh, category, how I will, what is what is my interaction going to be. So I think if I had to summarize, I would just say that you know if you consistently exceed your customers' expectations when they deal with you or when they, what what they expect to do with you, and you do it consistently, and you and you obsess over customer satisfaction. eventually you will have brand love you will have the love you will have the loyalty and you will have all the all the the flower and etc being thrown at you but these are the three things you know you constantly exceed your customers expectations whether it is i mean whether it's a nacco whether it's spotify whether it's let's card mantra now the, the way my expect i have a particular sense of what will happen if i go to one of one of these players you constantly exceed it you do it uh, uh, consistently and you obsess over customer satisfaction eventually you will have all the love Thanks, thanks, Ashish. Uh, anything from you, Prasanna? As closing remarks. Yeah, for me, I think most of the people have covered most of the points. The one point is slightly radically, you know, kind of going away from the main topic of uh, putting brand love as an important thing. I actually feel it's not a very important thing. Okay, I feel that it's a uh, it's not a discussion that I would like to have with the CFO or a business head or a, in the boardroom. because it's an idea which has its relevance in the marketing fraternity why because if i have to get a team to engage with the consumer in different ways then brand love is a good way to tell him or her that you know you need to have a different kind of engagement to the consumer there the brand love plays a role otherwise if i have to evaluate my business then loyalty is a good uh, you know alternate uh, look at your repeat purchases look at your loyal consumers how they are growing that's a better and more grounded way of uh, measuring brand love and brand love i think should be kept to the marketing council and the marketing group absolutely person i never want to have this conversation with my cfo and the leadership team trust me okay thank you guys thank you so much i i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed you know uh, discussing you know this topic with this diverse team and i hope you enjoyed uh, this time spent with us thank you so much thank you thank you thank so you. much thank you nia thank you so much for having us thank you